It's an organization about which very few of us have, have heard until recently. Um, and But when you hear about what its purpose is, you say to yourself, of course, what could be more important in our time in our Tukufa? So many of the Tsaras, whether it's kids at risk, whether it's families falling apart, whether all the different types of problems that we face as a, as a community and as a society, so many of them are traceable back to this particular problem and this particular challenge. I don't think we're aware of how ubiquitous, how widespread is this problem of addiction to inappropriate material on the internet and other things. If people who were Zoyfe in our families that we don't have, uh, didn't come into contact with it, we should know, however, that there's a very large proportion of B'nai Torah from Jews that are addicted to this. So this is all over. This is in our camp. There's a constant, a constant, every single second another person is falling prey to this, to the Yetzirah, this Yetzirah that no one guards you from. You can do it in the privacy of your home. No one can catch you. There's no fear. There's no shame. And people are just overcome by it. This is a, a whole in the Kedusha of Klav Yisrael. It's so widespread. It's Mamash Metame. It's Metame Am Yisrael. Arayis is a Tume. Tume means it makes a hevdal between us and the Rabbeinu Shalom. We can have a cash with the Rabbeinu Shalom with the Tume. We can avoid this Tume. We can be Mekadish Am Yisrael. And we can do it by supporting this organization. It's not an organization, it's a movement, which is actually the only, the only weapon we have at our disposal. And it's an international weapon that we have, which, which is, is effective. We can support it. We have to do our best or else we're an accomplice to what's taking place. I'm trying to do my best. I was ready to come from Baltimore just to speak to you about what well, I consider the importance of this organization. My introduction into this problem came a number of years ago before Guard Your Eyes was around. And it came as a result of a letter that was sent to my column in Hamodia. I don't have to give any speeches, I'll just read you the letter. I'm about to reveal something I've never discussed with a living soul and thought I never would. Your answer could save my life or not. More important than to read your answer, I am writing this so that it can be printed in its entirety and read because there are hundreds of people in my situation. I am a 21-year-old yeshiva broker. I went to prominent American yeshivas all my life and am now learning in a famous yeshiva gedol in Eretz Yisrael. Modesty aside, I was at the top of my class in shiurim, widely respected by friends and rebbeim. I planned to learn many years and go into Chinuch. I would find a perfect shidduch quickly, some Rosh Yeshiva's daughter, raise a beautiful family and spread nachas all around. A perfect life awaited. I was the from community's model son. As far as anybody knows, that is still true. When I was in the first year of Miss Medlis, age 16, my parents brought the internet into our home and my secret life began. To convince the story, I was very quickly hooked on Dvora Masurim. Let's not kid ourselves. Like every person on this planet, I was always curious. And all the blockers my parents set up fell away quickly without their knowledge. Like any person that becomes addicted to something, I quit many times. Once for a whole year, for months, many times. I buried my head in the Torah to save myself as best I could, but it always came back. Going against everything I'd ever learned, I continued. I slowly trained myself to shut God out of whatever I wanted to do. That led me to more and more Averis, Rahman al Without going into detail, suffice it to say that I am terribly ashamed of myself because I am not a loyal Jew anymore. But all this is secret. I allow none of it to show through. As much as I want to help myself, I realize I can't. But I can't get help either. 
I can bring myself to discuss my dark side with no one. The only difference between me and others also who, or and others who went off the derech is that because I am afraid to face the people who would lose respect for me, I pretend to toe the line, and therefore I am unhelpable. There are hundreds, maybe thousands of youngsters, of yeshiva guys, who are seriously addicted to a secret life such as mine. I know. I see it. It takes one to know one. You can imagine what kind of rocky futures are awaiting us. I read all the Jewish Observer articles on the evils of the Internet. I want this letter to be published to say, you have no idea how prevalent and far-reaching the effect already has been and will continue to be. What you do see is less than the tip of the iceberg. My question to you is, how do I get out? Without being overdramatic, you are reading the last gasp of a drowning soul. I had nothing to answer him. Guard your eyes wasn't around then. This was before guard your eyes time. If I get this letter tomorrow, or something like this, I have an answer to him. There are very few people to whom I can refer to in terms of therapy, but even a good therapist in an addiction can do nothing without a powerful support group. That's the nature of addiction. That's true of alcohol, of drugs, of food addiction, of compulsive gambling, of sexual addiction, and it's true of this. But to make matters worse, we don't have many therapists that are adequately trained for this. So I don't know that there's ever been a more serious problem to cloudy souls kedusha than that which we have now. And the only weapon we have against it, the only one, is guard your eyes. And that's why it's a pikuach nefesh. And it's everywhere. There's no, the idea of get away with the internet is doing away with the telephone. It can't be done. And we just have to find methods of being able to save people. And that's what we're here for. Thank you for listening. It started off like a teenager and the challenges of a teenager. And then the internet came along. And that's really where a habit began to reach in my life. It was a challenge. It was an impulse. It was a draw. You could call it whatever you want. But it sucked me in. It was filled, it was a life filled with shame on the inside. And all I knew was my own actions. I didn't know about anybody else's actions. And I fought it. I managed fought it. You know, we're in L now. I considered myself an L Yid. L was the only time of the year that I had a reprieve. And I and I made L last as long as I could. I even tried to have L last till Hanukkah one year. It was Givaldic. But ultimately, then the sun came back and the fools came back. I tried everything. I tried Kabbalists. I made Gadarim in my life. I had daily checkoffs. But this Mamish is a case of Ein Chavish Matir Atzmami Beis Asurim. The biggest problem was that I was all alone. And I couldn't handle it myself. I didn't realize it until later, but I was in the process of forming an addiction. And I tried everything. I didn't want this. I was growing. But this was growing with me. Then the feelings became bigger, until the point that I felt my life was out of control. I was... It was very painful, and it was just taking my life over. It was affecting my family already. They didn't know what was going on, but I knew on the inside. But who was I going to speak to? I couldn't, to my rub, you can't, I was too embarrassed to go to my rub. To my friends, this is not the type of thing you talk about with your friends. To my wife, you can't talk about this to your wife. 
And I went through the cycle of making more Kabbalists and trying harder again and trying harder and lifting myself up and falling and being all alone. Until finally I realized I had to do something. And I told my wife, I found myself in the Rob's office the next night and he gave me some chizik. But that was it. He didn't give me any tools. My wife wasn't satisfied. She forced me really to go into therapy next. I went to a therapist. I was willing. I wanted to. I wanted to move forward. I tried everything myself and nothing worked. And the therapist was helpful, got me to talk about it. But once again, I didn't really get tools. But the biggest Takara Satop I had to him was he'd said, why don't you sign up for the Guard Your Eyes Daily Physic? And I did, he signed me up, and I started to get these emails. And I read about other from Jews, from every walk of life, from ranging the full spectrum of our community. There were Bachram there. There were young Light who were posting. There was a Marbitz Tyra. I read a post of a Marbitz Tyra who said, I have over a thousand Talmidim. And they all look up to me for a dracha. But I've been carrying this challenge my whole life. And when he stumbled upon Guard Your Eyes and he read their handbook, he said in his post, he made Guard Your Eyes his Rebbe. And I started to realize I wasn't alone. There were others out there who had this challenge. All the from Yidin who were trying, but didn't have the resources, but now they did. And from Guard Your Eyes, I learned that there was a life to live forward. There was a way out. I signed up for the daily call. There's a call, but there's a program, and they work it through steps. Until God your eyes, I was all alone. But now, finally, I had resources. Now I had people to reach out to when I needed help. Now I had a program in my life that started to help me finally move forward. And I'm so thankful and I have such a curse of time. It's been almost a year and a half of a new life that I've started to leave. I'm still giving my shiurim. But now, I'm a better father. I've become a better husband. I've become a more honest employee. This summer I was able to work on Taras HaMachshava. I can never imagine this life of having a new chance, a second start. I thought this was going to go with me my whole life because I was stuck. You know, on the daily calls that were on, so our leader wasn't, he wasn't available one day. So he asked me to lead the call that day. I was happy to be of service. And I led the call. And during the call, and it's an anonymous call, so we're on the call and I'm leading the call, and a newcomer stumbles on. And you could hear in his voice how appreciative he was. He found, wow, he couldn't believe it. He had found a source of light in such a world of darkness that what he was living in. And we were all inspired from him. That night I get a call. He says, do you know I am? I said, no. He says, don't you recognize my voice? I was the newcomer. I recognize your voice. And he's someone from my community. A Ben Tyra. Someone we all in the community look up to. A Gavir. A Baltstaka. Learns tremendously. Everyone respects. And he, t and he said to me, this has plagued me my whole life. And I'm so thankful that I found your group. And we're starting to work together. I'm just one Jew, but I know deep down in my heart there are so many other Jews out there like me.
And it's this organization that's going to help us and help them and help me.